What is up, everybody? It's Dr. Vibe here, host and producer of the award-winning Dr. Vibe Show, the home of Epic Conversations. I'm the host of Epic Conversations, 2018 Innovation Award winner, given out by the Canadian Ethnic Media Association. And once a month, I host online conversations for fathers that are co-sponsored by Dad, Central Canada's National Fatherhood Organization, and Dove Men Care. We're broadcasting live on October 1st, and most Thursday evenings, we bring two wonderful Black American lady thought leaders on the dial. They were on earlier this week on Tuesday night, and they were so jacked and fired up. I said, are you really want to come back on Thursday? I said, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. So welcome back, as always, Aisha K. Staggers and Jill Jones. What's going on, ladies? Hey. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Hello, everybody. Hey, Hello. what's going on? How you doing? Hot. <laughs> Very <laughs> yeah. hot. Very hot in Southern California. And you're not allowed to have your air conditioner on all the time? Well, not all the time. Or we try to keep it low so, you know, we don't cause some kind of blackout or cata another catastrophe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Aisha K, how you been? Good. Pretty good, considering. <laughs> <laughs> dot 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 yeah. all right well folks ladies let's get at it uh we were on together thursday evening uh what what have you seen what are your feelings since uh ch tuesday evening the debate what have you heard what do you say yeah no what like what are your thoughts post debate well i think what i said what i said um on tuesday that the uh, not being able to disavow white supremacists should be the headline the next day. It has been for the last two days. So um, I'm glad that that's not being let go. And um, he, they even gave him another chance to do it, disavow the Proud Boys, white supremacists, and he still couldn't do it. His, of course, he did the Trump thing, which is like, I don't know the Proud Boys. Yeah, you do. Yeah, Meanwhile, he said it. He said, the "Proud right. Boys, stand." You know, I mean, stand by. How? What was that about? Right, and and just you know, I I found it interesting today. We're looking online, seeing J uh, John Roberts of Fox mm -hmm. News. Well, now here's another story for people who watch Fox News. You may not know, but. Before John Roberts was J.D. Roberts in Canada, he spent many oh. years. Yes, he he was one of the first co-hosts of our uh, music channel, video music channel called Much Music, which is oh, Canada. Right. Yeah, he's he's Canada's. He, that Much Music is Canada's counterpart to MTV. But right. J.D. Roberts was a hipster, <laughs> was an '80s baby, all that before he became. John Roberts with the gray hair and all yeah. that, but he was uh he was trending in Canada today <laughs> because he was complaining that the White House press secretary could not be clear, could not give a clear answer or a, a mm -hmm. great answer in regards to the you know proud boys thing. It was dodging questions. So I found it very interesting that uh, a member of Fox News was like sort of badgering, not badgering, mm -hmm. but had some very content. Uh, your favorite press agent. Yeah, pressing but he was right, be, right, and the press secretary also had a, had difficult understanding the difference between a Rhodes Scholar and someone who went to a university. Um, it, it's uh, crazy. A lot of, lot of reveals happening at this yeah. moment. Yeah, yeah, and 
and you have that many more people that are like leaving the fold, um, that moment actually is the one that I think really boosted uh, Joe Biden's um, fundraising. Uh, should we be expecting some ads based on that one line? There are, you know, what's so what's so funny is that the, within an hour, the Proud Boys came out with some kind of patch and T-shirt yes. that said "Stand Back, Stand By." So and a new logo and a new logo. So what do you th- what do you think they took it as? They took it as a call to arms. They took it as, yeah, we're, we're going to stand by, and and. At that, Donald Trump Jr. takes it even further with a dog whistle, which he just goes out and says, you know, be prepared to poll watch, which there are legal ways to poll watch. What he's calling for is in- intimidation. So, you know, these people are going to be armed in their T-shirts, armed with their guns, going to all the um, early p- early voting places, standing over people, not doing what's supposed to be done when you're a poll watcher. But I'm, I think that they should do certain things like even even the kind of uh, bizarre timing of them releasing that logo and that became like trending story. It's kind of like when Trump was talking about the rivers and finding a ballot full of river, a uh, river full of ballots, then which river and who found it? And the same with the logo. When was it registered? Was it registered because the next time he's online, Trump is streaming or talking about anything, I'm going to register something real quick and make it mine. You know, because that's a real curiosity to me. Like, did they register their logo? And if so, when? When? Yeah. Um, Because there's so many pirates out there. Why would you, how do you risk putting something like that out so quickly? Or was it just a piece of artwork? If it isn't registered by now, I mean, Come on, They're, they these are ways that these organizations aren't stupid. They know how to get money towards themselves and and to the, seriously. And it was already a patch. I mean, that to me speaks strongly that there was going to be a somebody told the Proud Boys they were going to get some kind of recognition that night. For yeah. me, they, it wasn't they, wow. They just all of a sudden went blah, 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 you know. I mean, they only had forty five minutes after the co- the comment was made to throw this up that that's a little strange to me and then they had the t-shirts on i mean Amazon. he went on fiverr and asked somebody to do it they couldn't uh couldn't have done it that fast yeah sorry but then they had the t-shirts up on amazon but i gotta say that the trump um that the the you know the trump folks thought that they were doing something but biden's people were just as fast with the uh shut up man t-shirts and then they had those on the um true uh, but shut up man Biden is sort of like how yeah. kamala did hers remember exactly. that girl was but, me i still yeah, but, think that i still think that they knew and by this time we all know kind of what your phrases are going to be or what you want it yeah. to be it were, what kind of world are we living in that we think that that's being uh, so random? I, I don't know. That's just me because I'm so suspicious of everybody. But I know that it's a high powered marketing team on both sides. I just I find it more I'm OK with Biden and them planning that or having or even Kamala, because that was one of my comments when she did the T-shirt. Like, oh, all of a right. sudden it's like ready to go. I remember being really busy about it. But. I'm finding this more disturbing, particularly because it's an agreement he made with a white supremacist group. Right. Well, see, this is the difference is that Biden's was done officially through the campaign. Mm -hmm. So that that was campaign ready, put up on the campaign website and you can only order it through the campaign website. And it comes through as a donation to the to the campaign. Trump was too much of a coward to even have his campaign involved in it. And and the Proud Boys did it on their own, but basically at the command of Donald Trump. That standby part was, it was the command to get things going. 
Absolutely. But I think they they knew they were going to get one and they had it ready to go. You know, it was in the can and it was ready. I think it's quite possible. And if somebody should look at all the timing, like what time did he say X, Y, and Z? And what time did it hit the air? Because for me, it's like, I just find it very strange because he said, proud boys, stand by. It was just, and then of course he claimed he didn't know them, but he said proud boys. I mean, what, what he was talking about the proud family, that, that uh, cartoon that my daughter used to watch when she was little, you know, uh, which I loved, but he really seriously, they think they try to pull something over on somebody, but I, I'd like to really wish someone would do a deep dive into the timing of it and possibly you know, look at, at some point, I'm sure you will find campaign correspondence, uh, not between Trump and them, but Trump's campaign people, because already Steve Cortez got his behind handed to him today by Anyal um, on um, MSNBC, because he had put to, because Cortez put together that ad of Joe Biden with um, his making something very perverted out of him hugging his grandson at his yeah. at his own son's funeral. So these people, I believe, uh, continue and they're prepared and they yeah. always know what their clapbacks are. You just, we just have to be more prepared to go, what, what time did this happen? It's like the river, the ballots were the rivers. Who found them, Trump? You said there was a river full of ballots. So a reporter asked today mm-hmm. to, press secretary, where is this river and who found it? It's sort of like the waiter who didn't have a mask. Like, dude, you where were you? You don't eat out often. And if you do, then you, certainly we should be able to see your itinerary. Right. Well, who, what are you talking about? He talks out of the air. And then that came, the, the, the reveal with the ballots came out that the military um, lost the ballots because they weren't, um, they weren't in the security envelopes that they should have been in. They weren't in the mm-hmm. proper envelopes. So they would they came back as invalid. Right. So it what it wasn't a big conspiracy. They came back in regular envelopes. It's true. I mean, a lot of people don't know that there's sort of a, a bullet point checklist. I think I have it on one of my stories on Instagram or something that you have to please on some, if you have to sign your ballots for the, your mail-in, it has to match what you have on your driver's license or state issued ID. Yeah. You know, some people have different signatures, but please try to stick as closely as possible to what you had. Now, here's the funny thing. I would almost believe somebody whose signature didn't look like their signature because I, I certainly, when you know, I mean, there's a whole bunch of ways anyone could look at it, but he's making a big deal out of nothing. Right. He's he, preparing, he really preparing to lose, but to try to steal the election. With with 45's uneven performance, and I asked this on Tuesday, but I want to bring it up again now because the vice presidential debate is next week. Can Pence sort of level up? The uh, the Merc or the questionable performance by his boss? Well, no, because Pence doesn't have a spine. Pence does whatever Trump does. The and this came out, um, I think it was yeah, I think it was um yesterday that the goal and the strategy of the Trump campaign at this particular um debate was for him to trip up Biden so Biden's stutter would come out. And so once Biden's stutter came out, that he would start to gaff. That was the whole thing. But Trump took it too far that he just kept interrupting that Biden never got to talk. And so that actually worked in Biden's favor. And I think that Pence is going to try and be Trump 2.0. And he's not ready for Kamala. She's she's you know she's an attorney, right? She's a DA. She's gonna Prosecutor, come. She's yeah. gonna come there. Put it this way: she's gonna come there and do him like she did um, Bill Barr, and he's not gonna be ready for that. He's right. he's going to go 
Um, he might not go full Trump. He might keep his temper down, but he has a record. He has a record now. Um, four years ago, he didn't have the Trump record. He has the Trump record. Plus, remember, he was um, on the task force of the coronavirus. He was running that task force. So she can stick that all night if she has to. So there really is, um, I don't see a way for him to try and, you know, present himself. He has no character. He has no personality of his own. He is, he's straight Trump. Okay. All right. No problem. Anything you want to and add? And I think what would be really important in whatever questions or things, if they get a chance to ask each other different things, it would be really important to get him on record going forward. We don't know what will ultimately happen in, in this whole situation, but I'm sure it'll come in handy to really find out what was communicated to him from Trump mm -hmm. about how to manage the task force. Yep. And did they ever, I mean, I hope Kamala turns it and starts asking him as if she's an attorney about what his steps and his processes were in some of his management of the um, task force and how it works and how they inter, inter, interacted amongst themselves with the Kushners, with all of them, just in order to get possibly um, numb nuts to incriminate somebody or something, you know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> his name. that was a pass, sorry. So, that was so, a, no, it's, <laughs> not so, so it's okay. Let me ask, and we touched a little bit on Tuesday, but after a few days, maybe some more thoughts. Uh, Chris Wallace's performance and what, if anything, needs to change with the next moderator? Well, it's not so much the, it's not just the moderator. The next moderator needs to be firm and strong, but they're going to have to change the rules. They have to change the rules so that Trump can't bend them. Like, like okay, for example, but, they're trying but, to. So let, let me interrupt, Aisha. You think 45 is going to allow a change of format? No, no way. No, and that's that's why he doesn't. That's why he doesn't want to. They want to change the format so that the moderator could, um, you know, turn off the mics and things like that. Well, both groups have to um, agree to it. Trump's not going to agree to any changes. Therefore, he can forego the last two debates, which he knows that he will get slaughtered. He doesn't want to bleed any more votes. So I think that once the um, committee comes back and says, okay, we're going to institute these changes, um, these are going to be the changes. Do you agree? Biden will agree. Trump won't. And he'll say that's his out to get out of the last two debates. Trump doesn't want to debate Biden anymore. He didn't, no. want, to debate him. He didn't want to debate him in the first place. That's why he went the way he went Tuesday night. He doesn't want to debate him anymore. He wants out. But see, like I would, like I mentioned, um, Eamon Moyeldin, who's MSNBC anchor, I really was impressed today. And I think he would be genius for this because he's quick on the uptake when someone answers. You need someone, like we mentioned before, like who knows the facts and who can just swoop right in. Well, Eamon today, he went after Trump's campaign advisor. He really didn't go after him until you know, Steve Cortez baselessly claiming that the Biden campaign agreed to earpiece inspections and backed off uh, cuts, and then he cuts off the interview. All of those lies have been generated by Trump's campaign advisor, Steve Cortez. And those are the people I was so impressed with how he went for them. But we need a moderator. I mean, that's still a professional inside the realm of uh, journalistic abilities that can just swiftly go in. I think that Chris Wallace, I guess he did the best that he could, like we spoke about, but we need someone who's going in and, and turning off his mic. What's going to preclude him? They said they think that the next one is supposed to be like a town hall. Well, and this will curb some of Trump's appetite. I even heard somebody sit up there and go, well, he was a lot better in his own town hall and was nicer because there are, are uh, voters there asking questions. And that, I mean, what planet was that person living on? Because we, in the town hall debates that he did with Hillary, 
he stalked her across <laughs> the stage. Yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised if he does something in that realm because Trump doesn't just repeat himself. Of course he's going to jump in and interrupt. Yeah. That's who he is. Well, we but, saw what uh, he did with um, Stephanopoulos and the people were mm -hmm. trying to ask questions. The one woman had to say to him, and let he tries to cut her it. off. Yeah, he tried yeah. to cut her off. So he'll cut, he'll cut this off time so what is the key component here? They need to get voters in that town hall debate who have passion, who are angry, who want answers. They don't need any mamsy pamsy, like, I'm sorry, I really, you know, and I can't do. They really need him to have to look in the eyes of the people who do not have family members because of COVID or who now have long-term ability, you know, problems. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Biden needs to have to address people who feel like he had so much time and he didn't improve people's lives. Biden needs to come back out and say, the reason your health care is crap or you couldn't pay the mandate, those were state mandates on the state level that yeah. started to control the ACA. And that was implemented by, by Republicans. <laughs> so I want him to sweep the floor. <laughs> I also want him to be able to handle the questions that come to him and they don't have to all be nice. But, you know, we're, it, Trump just, if we're expecting, you know, him to play nice because he doesn't have a microphone, forget it. No. Anything else you want to add, Jill? Yeah, I mean, all this stuff about the earpiece and all of this stuff. I mean, I'm still wondering if. <laughs> we have one for the thing. debate saying that he's, he's using a an earpiece. All the time. He's in a jacket, 100 degree weather. I don't even know if he's got a refrigerator inside of there or a cooling <laughs> exhibition or, or another person who's telling him what to say. Let's just be honest. This dude is, you know, those lips and shoes hey, that he wears. Hey, someone, uh, someone thinks you need to be hired. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> the lips that he wears. I, my cousin and I figured it out the other day. For sure you can tell he's got lifts. Oh yeah. If he doesn't have a disease, only oh, because man. only because he's like those he, church he ladies built. in the church. When you have a lift or platforms, ladies know this, you can lean a little forward. You yeah. can take the pressure off your back. So we were looking at him the other day. I said, he looks like Miss So-and-so when we used to go to church. And we were like, he has some big old shoes and big old feet, blah, blah, blah. But that's what we figured out about that but yeah i don't know what he's got going on it makes me wonder you know he had a piece of tape here which they did catch a picture of that that cool. tape could be a wire for the conic you Jill, know when stop you it. stop no it. for real <laughs> he could have got the cochlear implant but he didn't use the cochlear part but he used the part <laughs> that can transmit to your brain what to say but i've seen that i've seen that before that looks like a wig piece it oh, is. It's like, but here's the other thing. My someone in my family brought it up. I won't say who said he pays somebody seventy thousand a year. He can't find a better hair makeup stylist. You know, I, I know. Come I read, on, guys. I Come read on. Something. I read something to that. It's something somewhere that. But just Even want to that, shout out. He's I, a president. He can't I find anybody. I'm I'm reaching out. I'm just gonna say shout out to Real Django as always. Thank you for your support. Mm -hmm. And Nicole, Nicole feels that Jill Biden needs to hire you, Jill. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Lord. So if I was if I was if I was Trump, I would fire who who's ever doing well, that hair well, and makeup right did, now. Did, oh, did his yeah. did, didn't his campaign advisor or former advisor get fired? In the last day or so, that's the I one was, who tried to kill himself uh, down yeah, and beat up his wife. Yes. And, he, and I think they, Pars they killed Pars him. Pars yeah, he's or, gone now. Yeah, he's out. Yeah, he's gone. Like, <laughs> now, he's not but dead, now, but he's in the psych yeah. ward. Fifty-one, fifty, wasn't it? Yeah, but now they're worried that he's. Gonna, <laughs> they're mean, worried that he's going to talk. Real. For they're real, they have talk. a choice to go out in handcuffs or a straitjacket. I don't know yeah. what the administration is yeah. going to choose. Yeah, All and right. they should give up. Do you want to? 
uh, the Trump administration, do you have a choice? Do you want to leave in handcuffs or a straight jacket? Because yeah. you don't have an in-between here. He's, in, he's under Florida's version of a 5150. And so the campaign now is worried that um, because he's facing, remember, he's facing criminal time yes, over yes. the um, the the Trump uh, steal, you know, embezzling money. From yes, Trump, yes. Um, there's, there's, concern. Fund. there's concern so, that he may blow the whistle. He may, yeah, he may rat worried. on them. He's very concerned. And well, he's also afraid that they're going to throw him under the, the train, bus. not even a bus, a train. Yeah. They want him in bits and pieces by the time he's done. <laughs> yeah. Let's okay. And I have on. another thing. Somebody asked, you know, uh, Giuliani the other day was sitting oh, up no. there saying something t on some record uh, interview with Bannon or whatever, talking about how China owns Biden. I just want to know one thing. Who owned Giuliani's teeth before? <laughs> That's all with George Washington. Because I don't even think I don't even think dentists use that material anymore. I I don't know. <laughs> Was it from one of Trump's uh, building concrete oh construction sites? Oh, I'm like, dude, who owns your team? Oh. I don't even know if I could talk to him without like going. We're gonna move on. Like, okay, sorry. No, no, I I think no. I, he looks like that puppet madam. Remember that puppet yes. madam? <laughs> And they're like going like that, you know. All you see are teeth. Jill, Jill, where were you ever stand up? Do, do you ever do stand up? <laughs> Mm -mm. I think that I think that's where Biden needs to ha hire you. You should be the warm up act before he gives his speech. There oh, you yeah. go. You're you're the you're the warm up before he gives his speeches. There we go. Oh, well, we we've oh. had some, we've had some laughter and fun, but we're gonna go to the other side of the coin. Brianna Taylor. Yes. What is some good going news on? though? Aisha, good news, okay. right? Brianna yeah. Taylor. Yeah. Because so. For, again, I'm not even going to people. If you don't know what's going on, these ladies will update you. But please read because you're going to just end up shaking your head. Go ahead. Right. Aisha. Well, very quickly in the Breonna Taylor case, which I'm sure everyone's aware, she was um, shot to death in her home by police officers who came in on a no knock warrant. Um, when the person that they had, they were looking for, was already in custody, and. Um, the grand jury um, that was supposed to uh, see if there was reason to indict the police officers decided that um, to hold one, only one guilty of, what was it? What was the, what negligence? Was uh, warrant yeah. bullet? I don't know. Uh, yeah, basically, meandering for bullets. Shooting, <laughs> yeah, basically, for shooting bullets into the wall of the white family that lived next door to her, but not the, the wall of the black family. So um, one of the grand jurors um, felt, you know, got out and saw things and felt that they weren't given the full information. So went to the judge to ask for everything to be open. That's coming out tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. And it it's about 20 hours of recordings, I heard. Yeah. It's coming out tomorrow. What we learned today is that the or yesterday that the uh, attorney general of Kentucky did not even present any type of murder charge to the grand jury. So no manslaughter, no murder, no reckless disregard, nothing. He basically just justified the shooting. That's it. That's Daniel what Cameron. Wow. Daniel Cameron. That is what the so, grand, that's what the juror said in their um, their um, through their attorney. So Daniel Dudley Do Right, <laughs> Robert E. Lee, Confederate man. Uh, he and had a sheepish look. You got to yeah. say his face when he was doing the on the speech afterwards about it. Sheepish, sheepish. Couldn't make eye contact with people. Totally bought and, and sold. Yeah. And we got to say, this is a black man in color only who mm -hmm. has a connection to um, Mitch McConnell. Apparently, Mitch McConnell is some kind of mentor of his, and he believed that he was on the short list to be a Supreme Court nominee for SCOTUS. So, 
They have disputed the fact because before it was like we were under the impression that he was married to um, Mitch McConnell's niece. niece. However, a mentor. here's the interesting thing. They say it's not true, but nobody can find I before I agree that it's not true before in, in my heart of hearts. Where the hell did she come from and who are her fa Who are her parents? Who is your mama and daddy girl? Let's because just say the girl is a mystery. She doesn't have anything online. I believe there's still a story in there. I just mm. do. Call me let's, suspicious. Well, let's say this. Mitch McConnell was at There's there, something because um, it's it's not being, it's not transparent. It's not like Mitch, you go, she's not his, his cousin or his niece yeah. or whatever because here they are. Mm -mm. Well, no, Mitch no. McConnell was at their, Mitch McConnell was at their engagement party. So that makes you kind of suspicious. I have mentors too, but I don't know that they would necessarily come to my engagement party. Still want to see the pictures. How does a Daniel Cameron become- He was the only one person at his engagement party too, by the way. Yeah, so how would he, I don't know, is Daniel Cameron adopted uh, by white people? Um, I, I don't know how his circle gar gave him access to Mitch McConnell, even in looking at how he went to school. Like, where is that, you know, we met, blah, blah, blah. We had a drink or we met. He was in my school. Where does that come from? Fine, he's a mentor, but how did the spark? Where's the spark? Where I'm, wondering, I'm wondering if he worked for Mitch McConnell's um legislative office still in Kentucky. I, I, you I still wonder got to ask possible. yourself, how does a black man in Kentucky get access to a high profile politician like that? He, he, joins, the Republican, he joins the Republican Party first. That's the and find his way through. But believe because me, then he gets, more, gets to be a big fish in a little pond. You know what I mean? Or because somebody there, groomed there him that, because there's some yeah. devil. There's the devils in these details. And when he when we see what happens with Brianna's case, it's all going to inevitably come out. Yeah. Somewhere there was pay for play. And Absolutely. How, and, I would say he, there had to be. And how he presented that case, because remember, he had this case for a long time. And uh, so yeah. it took him it took him how many months, like four months before he even decided to make a decision as to whether or not he was going to present it to the grand jury because he was fine just to let it fall by the wayside. He was. It, it wasn't until um, Ben Crump got that settlement for the family that he had to do something right. because, this, because the city of Louisville paid for a wrongful death suit. Right. So it wasn't until then that he had his hand forced. Okay, and I'm that's gonna, really horrible. I'm going to yeah. jump in a bit. I've been able to pull up some information. So uh, just a little information on Mr. Cameron, a black Republican previously served as Senate Majority Leaders Mitch McConnell's legal counsel from 2015 to 2017. So during that time, he was in charge of the confirmation. In his 20s? In his 20s, he was Mitch McConnell's no, legal no, counsel? From 20, no, from 2017 to 20, 2015 I, to 2017. But I'm saying he's only 35 now. Well, there you go. So I'm just going to read on. During that time, he was in charge of for the of the confirmation process for con for conservative federal judges, including Supreme Court Justice Neil Gouch. Last year, he defeated Senator Will Schroeder in the Republican primary. He was then endorsed for the Attorney General post by forty five and the Kentucky Fraternal Order of Police. He then defeated former Attorney General Greg Stumbo in the November twenty nineteen ele general election, becoming the first Black attorney in the state. On, Can you on, say that part again about the fraternal order of police? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's so important. Last, so last year mm -hmm. he defeated state Senator Will Schroeder in the Republican primary. He was then endorsed for the attorney general post by 45 and the Kentucky fraternal order of police. He defeated a former attorney general, Greg Strumbo in the November 2019 general election, becoming the first black attorney general in the state. On March 27th of this year, two weeks of the day before Breonna Taylor was killed, he called on Kentucky's top health official to stop to put a stop to abortions in the state due to the coronavirus pandemic. This happened days after Planned Parenthood sued the state of Texas for implementing 
a similar policy. So he's trying to get a um, a judgeship. Something. Yes. So probably appointed to the since the um, United States Supreme Court didn't pan out for him. He's probably trying to get appointed to the Kentucky Supreme Court. Okay. So. Well, all that's fine and good on paper, but we all know that in real life, there's always people helping you along the way. So I know he was married before this chick. And the curiosity here is what put this man in proximity because clearly he's an op opportunistic person. Um, I mean, good, good for him, but somewhere the grooming came into place where they've been grooming him and yeah. it still could be a pay for play. Of course it is. And get an appointment. That's what of he's course. being promised. Of course yeah, it he, is. Yeah, he's been, he's been getting groomed since um, probably. Because you can't say his case. They're so amazing. Let's be honest. I mean, yeah, he, they're he's been getting they're, groomed since at least high school. He's just a big cock blocker. That's all. Yeah. And I'm sure I ain't going to say it, but, um, <laughs> you know, God only knows what else, but something's not right because even at his age and the movement and the trajectory of his, of his office, it's really strange. I don't know what cases he worked on for Mitch, but maybe he has something on Mitch. I don't know. Why would Mitch McConnell hire a 20 something year old black man as his attorney? That doesn't make any sense and it also, in any realm of the world. And it's also what, what part of his business was right. he handling? He could have been handling, you know, the land deal or the horses in the horse farms from Arab uh, Saudi Arabians in um, Kentucky. Who knows? All I know is that uh, just because we have the, you know, kinfolk, kinfolk, that's the truth. And he proved that. He didn't even yeah. give her the modicum of respect at this yeah. case. He just did it. Apparently, and, is and apparently awful. he didn't really mention her. Her name wasn't even mentioned on the on the um, grand jury um, paperwork. Mm -hmm. He he didn't even mention her name. Wow, wow. That wow. was that that was one of the um, things that they found disrespectful. You know, the family found disrespectful. Yeah. It was all about the it was all about the police and whether or not what they did was justifiable or not. Yeah. Okay. Well, our last conversation piece uh, for this edition of A Staggered State of Things featuring Jill Jones is some of the close Senate races that are going on right now. And, and Aisha wanted to highlight one in particular, so, some guy named Lindsey Graham. Sounds like he's having a little <laughs> bit of a fight. Yeah, Lindsey is, um, he, he's in you the know, statistical By part. the way, you know something good's going to happen because Jill's laughing already. No, I'm just laughing because it's just going down. I know Lindsay is in a tie with Jamie, with Jamie Harrison in South Carolina. And not only that, but Jamie was on, um, Jamie was on uh, Joy Reid the other day. And he said his mother called him. This is like, maybe this is yesterday. He said his mother called him and said, why'd you do that? He's like, what? What did I do, mom? And his mother said, why'd you make Lindsey Graham um, cry on Fox again? <laughs> Because Lindsay was crying on Fox because said saying it's he so needed true. money. Saying he needed mm -hmm. money. They're killing me. You gotta come and they're getting me. They're coming for me. You yeah. gotta help me. You gotta help me. I need more money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lindsey Graham is like out of money. And five dollars, three dollars, whatever yeah. you got. Yep. Like. They're tied at forty-eight forty-eight. But like, dude, I am not gonna have interest charged on my credit card for five dollars. Or and, or and, and mm. There, the key here is to watch how this race, this Senate race, is affecting the presidential race because now it has Jamie going up in the polls and tying Lindsey now has Biden in a statistical tie with Trump, where Biden right. might win, might, might be one of the first um, Democrats to win South Carolina in a presidential. But I think that there's one thing I was watching on Ari Melber. Um, he put up a chart reflecting 2016 with Trump and Hillary. And then he uh, compared where Biden and Trump are today. And, you know, it's not that different. There's a couple spaces and little spots 
that are a little bit different. And in fact, Hillary appeared to be looking better than Joe. I think even though, I mean, she was, everyone thought it was a shoe in. The biggest problem is that we can't get complacent and think that he's got it because there's still really, I think because there's so much of a divide, I've been doing a lot of volunteering and texting and calling. And there's also a lot of people who don't wanna share their information with you about what they want and what they don't want. The fact that there's such a small margin still left, I mean, that the, if you wanna look on the bright side, you could say, okay, we know that Biden has 50% like solid in certain areas. And you could look at that as like, those are unchanging voters. There's really nothing Biden could do to lose that. And if the onus is up to, to Trump to capture all of the ones that are still undecided, the odds of him being able to get those, all of them is difficult. So that's the bright side. However, we have to really look at Florida is still an intensely, you know, we, for some reason, Spanish people just think Trump gives a damn about them and he could give he, what he's been doing. That, and it really makes me think that they just don't pay attention. And maybe there's a disconnect or maybe they don't understand what they're reading. I mean, I but, honestly have to say, and abortion is a one issue voters. Honestly, yeah. I have no excuses for Spanish people in Florida voting for Donald Trump. They, that, they have a hierarchy inside their own community about, well, we're rich Cubans. Those are the poor dark Cubans. It's pathetic. And, you know, people of the same African diaspora diaspora who feel that they're better and they're going to be taken care of by Trump. Sorry. Well, one of the things that I noticed, uh, like too, I said, I think I saw that episode on Dallas when I was growing up with the Spanish farmer who came up and talked to whatever. The, it, this is like, and the honesty is that th those are the tight races. Wisconsin is interesting. Texas, Ohio is, is really interesting from my phone calls. But a lot of the Ohio people, the ones who are undecided, I got to tell you, are white men. And there's something where what scares me about white men is because a lot of white men in America seem to have turned into just massive incels, even old incels now. Their wives have left them. Some of them are alone. I mean, you, you just see it all in these things. And Jane, they think he's a tough guy. I just yeah. want to, before, before Aisha continues, I just want to shout out to some people. Black Beauty says, right on point, Jill. Also says, I love the vibe of this show. You guys are awesome, well-informed. Uh, she goes, LLL about <laughs> Lindsey Graham and uh, Birdie Lynn TV out of Tennessee, because I spoke with her offline yesterday, is saying fire, 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 and stars to the ladies. So, oh, Aisha, can continue on. I think the places where you have these tight Senate races are the ones to watch as far as where Joe Biden can pick up states. You're right. So I those think are you're the right. Ones, those are the ones that I think where Hillary Clinton had trouble with last time because there weren't those tight Senate races. Mm -hmm. I think this go around is, are the ones to look for. Black Beauty says something you're interesting and in just responding to what you just said, Aisha. Absolutely correct. There's a lot of these hidden Ken Karen followers of 45, pardon me, 45 in the white community. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah. And and of course the Uncle Toms and the Aunt Jen and Aunt Janes in Aunt the Black Jane. community, especially sure. in my especially in my state, Ohio. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. But I have a feeling that um, there's. I think Joe Biden is going to be able to win Ohio, and the reason w being is that Trump has failed so many people in Ohio. He he goes to Ohio talking about I brought back factories that the factories are gone <laughs> he's telling people i got you a factory job i got you a factory job but the factories are gone so um when he's talking about i brought back 700 or what was it seven yeah he said he brought like 700 million jobs back in factories and, and, and it's like do, mm, do, do, no. do you ladies feel sorry or concerned at all for susan collins no no she needs to go She's, she's really useless. She has proven herself to 
it, it, there, it, I don't even want to waste my time talking about Susan Collins because she's a despicable. <laughs> I'm Spence concerned that she's still here. She is a Spence Stradler, and she's disgusting. She should look at her life and go and bury herself. Or she should just <laughs> go in and do us all a big favor. Um, you know, Birdie the, the Lynn's one, all, Birdie, Birdie Lynn is feeling you all over on that. Jill. I she can't did. deal with her. Good she God was, Almighty! You know, Southern. And, if she was Southern, whatever she'd be she one of those is, women. She she'd be to, one of those women who always caught the vapors. She needs, you know? yes, exactly, and a fainting couch. But at this point, somebody needs to just at her at her election night when she can't, when she loses, get a shovel, walk up on stage, and just hand it to her and say, "Go on, girl," and then let her just go and start digging. I honestly don't like her. I just don't. And you know, because well, we're dealing with with a couple of things like. Just to fact check a couple of things. People still believe that Trump isn't like where he said, I'm protecting coverage for, for um, you know, pre-existing <laughs> conditions. And no. there, was proof, the, there was proof today. They did they did a vote in the Senate floor. Um, Chuck Schumer brought uh, pre-existing conditions um, bills to the floor. And thank you. Republicans, Republicans, down party line, they did he not. He has been vote calling for, for this entire law to be eliminated mm -hmm. and his administration is allied with conservative states on the lawsuit to kill it. He wants that Supreme Court person in there because he does want to get rid of it. He well, also, Biden did not say that he thought Trump's travel ban was xenophobic. That is not true. That's a lie. And the economy, when you were talking about he thought he brought back 700,000 jobs, uh, let's forget the fact that who's laying off like a hundred, Disney's laying oh. off a ton. But anyway, um, yeah. he said, we're doing record business. And basically the Los Angeles Times has a whole list of fact checks that was brilliant. And I suggest everybody go and read it because that uh, talking about coronavirus and everything. No, the millions of dollars that he said he paid in taxes. The I want to clarify this, the internal revenue service, has said that audits do not preclude any taxpayer from ever releasing your tax returns. Yep. So that's a lie. If he wants to release them, he can. The audit means nothing. Nothing. Right. Zipola. I just want to. I just want to. Before Aisha continues on about the Supreme Court, I'm just reading this afternoon. Supreme Court nominee Amy Coney Barrett is not an Oxford University Rhodes Scholar. Scholar. Right. White House, your favorite White House press secretary. That she was. Yeah. I mean, maybe she went to Rhode Island. <laughs> oh, gosh. And for a trip or getting her nails. <laughs> I don't know. I went to Rhode Island. And I, uh, um, should I just start saying, calling myself a Rhodes Scholar? I mean, these people are idiots. Okay. And so also, what it showed also is that the press secretary, she said, my bad after they said that to her. What's so beautiful about it? It shows how ill prepared she was. Yeah, didn't prepare, didn't read. Yep, she yep. was being fed information. She refers, she refers to that notebook. Yes, of, thank that you. Notebook. That was and a they, big reveal. That, in, in sections, they have sections. So whenever somebody answers a question, she flips to that section exactly. and reads and reads from it. That tells you that She's she a doesn't. Prop. She is. She doesn't know anything. And we, let's she just put Barbie. Anything. Let's get Barbie. <laughs> and have Barbie stand at the microphone for the press conferences and then just have a little hang on and then a voice can come and read what the answers are. He Let's has a notebook with seconds. Yeah. That's what kills me. Like even when yes, they had the, remember, remember when they had the when George Floyd when the, they had questions about George Floyd, she yeah. had a George Floyd section. Yeah, and, I was like, like that's yeah. from some weird movie, you know? I don't even know. I felt like, hang on a minute. Yeah. What's the, you know, just I'm doing what they telling me, you know? I'm oh, just doing yeah. what I'm told. So, so Black Beauty is saying, <laughs> um, yep and yep, 45's killing Ohio with all the negative pitchfork stabbing over Goodyear. This yeah. is Bi when, he's saying this this is Biden Harris country now for the most part. Yeah, as well, it should well, be. Alden's stats announced that they were laying people off. 
uh, American yes. Airlines. It was Disney. 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 And a whole bunch of people are laying. There was like 100,000 jobs being laid yeah. off, laid off today. But here's one, I guess, one of our final conversation points. House Nancy Pelosi and the White House can't agree on a uh, continued funding. What's it like? Are the Democrats in any danger for being like they had original um, money ass? They've lowered them, mm -hmm. and now forty five and in this uh, Steve, what's the guy? Steve Mnuchin. Mnuchin says no, still no. So it should now some people would say, well, they should just agree to what the White House says and get some money out, not none. No, and I'll tell mm -hmm. you why. First of all. Trump's people who thought COVID or still think COVID is a hoax, you don't shouldn't get anything. You shouldn't get a damn thing. You should get out there and pull yourself up by your bootstraps and muddle through because you guys are the happening people who can make it work. Oh, but you need our help and you won't give us anything. You know, I you want to keep passing around diseases. See, we have a problem here because I'm believing. You're coming into my territory, infecting me and keeping it where I can't work. I can't go on tours. I can't do um, uh, in-person uh, speeches or anything anymore. So suffer, suffer. Mm -hmm. I have a savings. I'm sorry. I'm helping as many people. And I know many, many other people are. I don't have a lot of savings, but I, I know that sounds really bitchy, but even if I didn't, no, I would love to have more, more, uh, e you know, an equal outlook on this. But Steve Mnuchin is the one who should be dragged, like dragged on the back of a moving vehicle, dragged at this point, because there are people in bread lines here. The um, the the downtown where we donate food and that the, the, there's no more. You've got to bring go shopping and take it down to the food supplies. I have a friend delivering food to people. He has a hell of a lot of nerve. If it, you know, Governor Newsom just signed into office yesterday, something for to proceed forward with racial disparities and things happening with our police force and different things, just to get that topic going. He's also provided as much money as I think we can. He's trying to get more, but if it means that we have to like, I mean, didn't anybody like really pay attention to the Boston Tea Party? Because I don't know what more we can do. Trump's days are numbered. They're over. First of all, I keep saying, I don't think he's going to get through the month of October physically. He just doesn't look well to me. I don't know. It's a vibe that I have to something. Yeah. He doesn't look well. He looks yeah. really jaundiced in the eyes. Like, I think the orange is to cover up something. It, because it's pretty bad. You have bad makeup artists like that. A dude who was on a TV show? Come on. What's happening? Aisha, any final comments? Well, I think that um, Jill's right when it, when she is talking about that the Democrats don't need to come down any further. I, I, I think what this shows is that the Republicans can't compromise. Um, the Democrats have gone down twice on what they were willing they to have. Pay. I mean, I and don't know what point, they want us to get. Twenty dollars. We're at three hundred right. now. And put it at this way. Put it at this. At this. Put it this way. If Nancy Steve Pelosi, tight, had, okay, yeah. I know it. Listen, if Nancy Pelosi had <laughs> offered had offered an Steve. additional tax break for the rich in mm -hmm. that in that bill, that's the only they, way. They, they, no take, way. they would take it in a minute. Absolutely, but. That that is the problem. That's they, the don't, they don't want to give. They they always want to, something so crazy, right? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. They don't want to give anything to the people who are in need, and then they want to say that because the Democrats don't don't agree to it, that it's the Democrats' fault, and yeah. they're going to, they're trying to use that as a political strategy for Donald Trump. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. First of all, first of all, under stupid. what planet? I for who ever thought that twelve hundred dollars was enough? I must maybe I'm a real bitch or something, but or or and snooty, you can call me whatever, but twelve hundred dollars is nothing. That's all Trump could think of 
I see my family in distress or whatever, oh my God, I got to get them help. I've got to get them stuff. This dude did nothing. We had to like beg, please, sir, can we have a little bit of like $1,200 and we'll make it stretch for eight freaking months? So, so Think just about the, other countries who've gotten, um, who like Canada and like right, well, so Europe and Germany, who got more. Hmm? Aisha was just going to bring that up. So in Canada, we got two thousand dollars a month. Yeah, right. but think about right. countries who've gotten that, who've gotten a monthly stipend, yeah. and think about their economic recovery. Think but about also, how well yeah. how well they've been able to manage the COVID crisis. And this is we have just suffered an utter failure of any of everything. He failed us economically. He failed us physically Business with our health. He, oh, he, wait. He, he but that, everything. Was, let's not forget that treasure of going after, you know, um, the money that was just supposed to come to small businesses. Right. I would have been luckier to find the freaking holy grail or a life, a, a, a age serum quicker than getting a hold of that money. By the time any of us applied who had companies or uh uh nothing it was it, gone it was like it, it was, was like um business. it was like the rich people black thursday <laughs> uh, every, and and i don't know who they must have had serious like you couldn't even get an application in banks were not like dealing no thank you steve no. mnuchin's wife got money for that building yeah. she has up in harlem yeah, and, 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 it, and her ugly ass paintings got money. And they let banks. They let, sorry. Yeah, they let banks turn oh, regular sorry. people down. They let banks turn regular people down and accept small business ventures by rich people, so rich people could back up the loans with their own exactly. money. That was and that was wrong. And musicians got nothing. They just told us to bend right over and let us slip it on in because everybody knows it's like a pencil. The problem is that the problem what they're doing and they've done they this is this is what really killed me with that their small business stuff this is a white house that has no culture nobody performs there there's no artists who attend any meetings there's there's no great dinners that of culture even even jf kennedy john f kennedy jr had or jfk had um people like mark rothko different people from different cultures uh, dancers, uh, all sorts of people attend events. But think Those about things, what Obama's had. It is the culturalist. Culture. Yeah, exactly. This, these are some cold, hard ankled people. They do not care. And today, I have to pick up my phone and look at his stupid wife talking. About, I don't even know what she's talking about. I thought it was a Brett commercial from the 1970s, <laughs> and she turned on an angle having a whole freaking conversation. Hello, I don't know. Did uh, I have, I'm so appalled and, and angry every time to have to look at these people. I'm, I'm tired, I'm tired of hearing his voice. I'm, I'm so tired of them, her, their kids, their little kids. I just want them gone. I'm so tired of, of everything being so broke down, raggedy, jalopy, uh driving administration in a clown car i can't take it anymore i can't on, on that note i think we're gonna finish today because <laughs> we've had them on twice this week and you didn't think they'd have any energy for twice Sorry, this week i lost it it's all it's all right it's okay so final comments from the audience here uh birdie lynn's going l o l l l o l black <laughs> beauty saying regardless of what we do as Dems notice how the press always says it's the Dems holding up the passing of the stimulus when the reality is McConnell and his Republican cronies are being so tight. Uh, Bertie Lynn says complete lack of respect for the process. She also says his propaganda attention capering is tired. LOL, $1,200 for eight months. Uh, Real Django says $1,200 was BS. Canada cared about their citizens. Uh, Black Beauty says, you guys need to put in a bid to replace the evening news here in America <laughs> because you ladies are well-informed and America needs this kind of fact-based reality. There's mm. a huge compliment there. And Thank you so much. And Real Django yeah. says, 45, quote, knowing, unquote, about COVID-19 in January, February, he could have had his people do a plan. Oh, one sure. other thing. Okay, quick. About what, about what Django said. 
it also came out today that Trump's people, it, well, it was ordered by Trump and his people, they did know about the masks in January and February and decided it wasn't a good look. So they decided okay. because it wasn't <laughs> because it wasn't a good look, that's that's okay. why they decided they were not going to promote them. Oh. Okay, on that note, and before Jill really loses, we're gonna, we're gonna, as Paul Abdul said, we're gonna shut up and dance out of here. So, <laughs> Jill, as always, you were fire. If people want to get a hold of you, Jill, how can they do that? Uh, Jill D. Jones at Twitter is probably the best, or my Facebook page, which is uh, Jill Jones Universe. No, Jill Jones Music. Sorry, no that's problem. me, and Instagram, Jill Jones Music. Aisha, you can find me at Aisha K Staggers. I'm sorry, just Aisha Staggers <laughs> on Twitter. And um, yeah, I should be there tonight. Oh, I have a feeling. And uh, just interesting what you just shared, Aisha, about the the look. Real Django goes W T H two question marks. So. <laughs> It never stops. All right. Well, folks, I'd like to thank everyone who caught this live uh, where I'm at, of uh, the ones who contributed on the comments. And thank you. Great in the comments section tonight. Real Django, Nicole, Black Beauty. Black Beauty, we've never seen or heard of you before, but thank you for joining in and helping make it an epic conversation. I am Dr. Vibe, host and producer of the award-winning Dr. Vibe show, the home of epic conversations. Excuse me. And I'm the host of epic conversations. 2018 Innovation Award winner given out by the Canadian Ethnic Media Association. Uh, as always, I like to say, if you want to get a hold of me, the best place is my website, the D R V I B E S H O W dot com. And if you want to continue being a supporter, we'd appreciate that 150%. Like to say, as always, as I close, live your life as a dream. If you can dream it, you can make it. Sometimes you have to get smaller to get stronger, block assumptions, then aim bigger. Aim better, aim higher, aim wider. Thank you. Black Booty says, I'll be back. We'll subscribe to the channel. These ladies are definitely on most Wednesday evenings. Follow us. And big thanks to BIA Media for another epic production. God bless. Peace be well. Keep the faith and walk good. <laughs>